Welcome to the Geometry Honors Chapter 7 review video. I'm going to go through each of these questions in the study guide and explain my reasoning along the way. For problem number one, I'm being asked to find what the ratio is of the length of the car to the length of the model car. And I know that when I'm making a ratio, I need to have the same units. So I'm going to change this 200, 2 meters into 200 centimeters. Now I have 200 centimeters and 3 centimeters. I have the same unit. So what I'm going to do is look at the ratio. I need the length of the car to the length of the model. So the length of my car is 200 centimeters, and the length of my model is 3 centimeters. So my ratio is 200 over 3, or simply 200 colon 3. For number 2, I need to do something a little bit different. They give me the ratio, and I'm looking to see how many red bricks I use. So what I need to do is I need to incorporate a little bit of algebra here. And I'm going to say, OK, total, I have red bricks and I have gray bricks. And if I add up all of my red bricks and my gray bricks, that gives me my total number of bricks, which is 210. I get 7x equals 210. And when I divide that, I determine that x equals 30. But I'm not asked what x is. I'm asked how many red bricks are used. And I know that red bricks is this top number here, which is 5. So I need to take my 30 and I need to multiply it by 5, telling me that I used 150 red bricks. I'm going to do something similar for number 3. I'm going to add up x plus 4x and set it equal to 90, since I know complementary angles add to 90 degrees. So I get 5x equals 90, which tells me that x is going to be 18. So x is 18, but again, that's not what I'm being asked for. I want to know what are the degree measures of the two angles. So I need to plug that back in. Well, one of my angles was just x. So I know that angle measures 18 degrees. The other one was 4x. So I need to multiply 18 by 4, which gets me 72 degrees. So that's my answer. And in number 4, I have a similar thing, except I have this extended ratio, 1 to 3 to 6. And that tells me how many green peppers, onions, and tomatoes I use to make some salsa. So, same thing, x plus 3x plus 6x equals my 110 cups of salsa. That means I have 10x equals 110, so x equals 11. But again, that's not what I'm asked. I'm asked how many onions I need. So, green pepper, onion, tomato. Onion is my middle value. So my middle value here is 3. I multiply my x by 3, and I find out that I need 33 cups of onion. So for 5 and 6, I just need to do some cross multiplication here. So when I cross multiply, I get 15a equals 120. I divide that by 15 to find out that a equals 8. I'm going to do the same thing with 6. I'm going to cross multiply. But here, I need to do a little bit of distribution. So I get 12y equals 5 times 3y minus 8. I have to distribute in my 5 into those parentheses. So I get 12y equals 15y minus 40. I'm going to move my 15 over to the other side. And I get negative 3y equals negative 40. Dividing by negative 3 is going to give me a decimal. So instead of writing a decimal, I'm just going to leave my answer as y equals 40 over 3. OK, so I'm going to slide my paper up a little bit here. For number 7, they give me a proportion. And they want me to write an equivalent proportion. So if I follow, I've got a over b and 6 over 19. But I've changed it. I've got a over 6. So I have to see what pattern happened. a over 6. OK, so I went from left to right. So b over 19 would be my missing part of my proportion. OK, now in this last one, I need to come up with my pairs of congruent angles. I've been told that these quadrilaterals are similar. That's what this little symbol means. And I know in similar polygons, all of my angles are congruent. So what I can do is one of two things. I can either look at my picture and match things up. 
So here, this has the same tick marks as this, so I know R and D go together. S and E go together because they have the same tick marks. Or I can simply look at the name. I know T is my first letter and B is my first letter, so angle T is congruent to angle B. Going then in order, angle Q is congruent to angle C, angle R is congruent to angle D, and angle S is congruent to angle E. Okay, so for this next problem, again, they tell me that I have similar polygons. They want me to complete the statements. So angle H is congruent to which angle? Well, here's H. Clearly, it's congruent to B. But I can also check my name. H is the second letter, and B is the second letter. So I know angle B is my answer. And then I have GH over DJ is going to be equal to AB over DC. Again, this is just finding patterns. Okay, so now I have a question about these triangles here. Whoops. I want to know, are these polygons similar? If they are, write a similarity statement and give the scale factor. So two-part question. For the first one, I have this picture here. I want to know, are they similar? I see that I have one pair of congruent angles here, so that's a good sign. The other thing I have to do is check to see whether my sides are proportional. So I set up my two fractions, 10 over 12 and 15 over 18, and I have to see if they reduce to the same thing. Here I can divide by 2, and I get 5 over 6. Here I divide by 3, and I get 5 over 6. So my sides are proportional, so I know these two triangles are similar by side, angle, side, similarity. And then my similarity statement is going to be triangle V, U, W, similar to triangle, I have to go in that same pattern, so S, R, T, S, R, T. And my scale factor is 5 sixths. Okay, for number 11, it's talking about this diagram of a landscape plan, so kind of like a, a scale drawing or a blueprint. And I need to figure out if the scale is one centimeter equals 10 feet, then if trees are spaced 2.7 centimeters, how far should they actually be planted apart? So I know my scale is one centimeter over 10 feet. So I wanna know if I have 2.7 centimeters, how many feet is that? Okay, so I'm going to multiply this 27 by 10, because I have cross multiplication, which gives me, or sorry, 2.7, which gives me 27, equals x. So I know that that's going to be feet, because I have centimeter to centimeter, feet to feet. So I want to plant my trees 27 feet apart. All right, number 12, are the two triangles similar, and how do you know? So I see they give me a lot of information about my angles, but not about my sides. So immediately I'm thinking angle, angle, similarity. But I have to check to make sure that's right. Right now I have one angle 60, one angle 53. I need to figure out this angle here. So what I'm gonna do is in my calculator, I'm going to add 60 plus 53, which gives me 113 degrees. But I need to subtract that from 180 which is the total sum of my angles in a triangle, which gives me 67. Now I can compare these two triangles because I have my 60 degree angles congruent and I have my 67 degree angles congruent. So I do know that they are similar by angle-angle similarity. So question number 13, I'm looking at these two triangles here and I see that they've given me one set of congruent angles here and I have vertical angles. So I've got angle, angle, similarity. For question 14, I see that I've got a lot of side lengths given to me. So I'm gonna set up my extended proportion with all of my sides, and I'm going to see if they do in fact reduce down to the same value. I really don't like the fact that I have this decimal here, 
So I'm going to multiply these fractions by 2. So I end up with, instead of 5, 7.5 and 5, 7.5, I'm going to end up with 10 over 15. And both of those are the same, so I'm just going to write it once. Now 10 over 15, when I reduce it, I can divide by 5, and I'll get 2 over 3. My 8 over 12, I can divide by 4, and I also get 2 over 3. So because these are the same value, I know that these triangles are similar by side, side, side similarity. And my similarity statement that I write will be triangle blank, similar to triangle blank. And I know that B and N are going to be like my, my vertex angles where my two congruent sides branch off of. So B and N are going to be my first two letters. And then I'm going to like turn this triangle here so I can see it more clearly. It's going to look like this. It's going to be N, M, O. So if I start with B, I'm going to go clockwise, C, A. C, A. And I'm going to go N, O, M. So that is my similarity statement and my justification. Okay, let's look at 15. 15, looking at my picture, they give me one set of congruent sides, and they give me a set of congruent angles, and this is a reflexive side, so I know that that's going to be congruent, or at least proportional. In this case, it is congruent. So I have these two triangles being similar by side, angle, side, similarity. And to write my statement, I'm going to have B... D, A, similar to B, D, C. And my last problem here is 16. Okay, so I see they've given me one set of congruent angles here and here. They've also given me some sides. But I have vertical angles. So I know that these two angles are going to be congruent, which means right away, Angle, angle similarity proves that these two triangles are similar. And it only asks me what theorem or postulate I need. It does not ask me for a similarity statement. So I'm good to go to the next problem. So this next problem is a little bit more tricky because they give me a lot of information, but I have to really use it in a different way than we've used it before. First of all, I see that I have two triangles, this small one here and this larger one here. I also see that they're sharing this angle, so I know that that right there is at least one angle that's congruent. I also know, since I have congruent sides here, that this triangle is half as big as this triangle. So because it's one half, I know I have similar triangles with a scale factor of 1 to 2. 144 here would be 288 here. 120 here would be 240 here. So if this is 160, just using your brain, you need to make it half as big. So your tree is going to be 80 feet tall. For number 18, I need to write a proportion using the ratio WX over WV. So basically what that is, is if I'm looking at my tiny, tiny triangle here, the smallest one, I'm taking my tiny side over my hypotenuse. So now, my tiny side over my hypotenuse, I need to look for that in both my medium triangle and medium triangle and my large triangle. So my tiny side over my hypotenuse. Let's look at our medium triangle. I need my tiny side over my hypotenuse. So VX over VY. VX over VY. I'm going to set that equal to whatever I get my large triangle, which is this one here. My tiny side is WV, and my hypotenuse is WY. WV over WY. So what was tricky about that problem is figuring out that this ratio here is my tiny side over my hypotenuse of my small triangle. And then I just had to do the same thing, tiny over hypotenuse, tiny over hypotenuse, for my medium and my large triangles. 19 and 20, I'm looking for my geometric mean, 
which remember is just setting up a proportion, 2 over x equals x over 7. So x squared equals 14. I need to take the square root of that, which means I need to use Joe's method. 14 divided by 2 is 7, 7 divided by 7 is 1. Okay, square root of 14 is my answer. I can't simplify that anymore because there's nobody to group up over here on this right side of my column. Now let's try 81 and 4. So I have 81 over x equals x over 4. So I have x squared equals 81 times 4. 81 times 4 is 324. Okay, Joe's method, 324. I can divide that by 2. I get 162. I can divide that by 2. I get 81. I can't divide that by 2. But I can divide it by 3. I get 27. I can divide that by 3. I get 9. I can divide that by 3. I get 3. I can divide that by 3, and I get 1. So now I need to go back and group these things up to see who can come out of my square root. I get 2's coming out, 3's coming out, 3's coming out. Oh good, so nobody's going to be left, home, left home alone underneath the square root. Everyone gets to come out. And the way I do this, I say 2 times 3 is 6 times 3 is 18. So the square root of 324 is equal to 18. Then I have number 21. Number 21 says, find the length of the altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. The triangle is not drawn to scale. Okay, so I'm looking for the length of the altitude. Here, they did not give you your variable, but I can draw it in. It's right there. That's what I'm looking for. So what I need to do is I need to make my box. Let's move this up just a little bit. I'm going to make my box. So I've got my small, my medium, my large triangles, my hypotenuse, my big side, and my tiny side. So my small triangle, my tiny side is going to be 8, and my big side is x, but I don't know my hypotenuse. My medium triangle, my tiny side is x, my big side is 18, but I don't know my hypotenuse, and my, oh, well, I don't even need to go any further because look, there's my proportion. All I have to do is take this proportion and solve. So I cross multiply and I get x squared equals 8 times 18. 8 times 18 is 144 and when I take the square root of that I know that x equals 12. Okay for 22 what is the value of x given that pq is parallel to bc? I can use side splitter theorem. So all I need to do is set up a pattern of some sort. I'm going to do 8 over 12 equals x over 18. 8 times 18, I just did that, I get 144. So 12x equals 144, and when I divide by 12, I get x equal to 12. I've got two more problems here. Number 13, it's the same thing. Because I know AE is parallel to BD, I have side splitter theorem. So I set up 11 over 7 equals x over 5. And remember, you can set these up in numerous ways. I get 7x equals 55. I go and I divide by 7. And that's not going to work out nicely, so I'm just going to leave my answer as 55 over 7. And the last one here. For number 24, I have three different parallel lines, so I'm just going to go ahead and set up one of my patterns. I'm going to do x over 12 equals 24 over 36. So 36x equals 288. And when I divide by 36, I get x equals 8. So that is my answer for that problem. All right, that's it. Good luck. I hope you study a lot, and I will see you in class for your test.